Oh, not the video that I thought was going to come today. It's a little later than normal. <laughs> really not getting used to the new normal, but um, this video is not intended for the saints of the Church of God, which is the Church of the Living God, ground and pillar of truth. Okay? This video is intended for you lost people. Okay? We're going to be addressing something here, and I want to... Um, I want to demonstrate and show you something, okay? When the devil attacks saints, saved people, okay? Uh, by the way, I'm not a Christian. I don't affix myself to that, that term which Catholicism has adopted as her own. Most people, you'd, you'd say the Christian, what do they think of? They think of a Catholic. <laughs> there you go. I'm a saint. You might be scoffing at what uh, me saying that, but according to this, the authorized version of the scriptures, a saint is someone who is either right with God or a saved person. Okay? Right with God, that means dispensationally. You lost people have no idea what I'm talking about. But see, a lot of devils watch what the Lord gives me here and try to attack. So I've got to kind of make that mention, okay? But... When we saints get attacked by the devil, there are certain things that we have to consider. Number one, what am I doing wrong? Why is, this, why is the devil allowed to attack me? Number two, what am I supposed to learn from it? And number three, once you come to the uh, conclusions of these things, how do you deal with it? Well, we're going to look at one way that it's dealt with, but the ultimate way that we as saints save people... <coughs> <coughs> deal with um, satanic oppression, satanic temptation, is the Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. And we're going to see this. It is written. It is written. It is written. It is written, and the Lord rebuke you, I should say. Okay? The scriptures tell us the scriptures tell us in 2 Peter chapter 3, in the authorized version of the scriptures, that is what most of you would know as the King James Version. The King James Version, authorized version, is the inerrant, infallible, given by inspiration, perfect word of God. Okay? Preserved in English. Yes, it's preserved in English. You want a copy of the scriptures in your native tongue? You use the authorized version as your base to translate into other languages. Okay, you don't need to go to the Hebrew or the Greek. That Those have served their purpose to give us the authorized version. Okay, you lost people, you don't know, have a clue what I'm talking about. And those of you do, this one's for you. Second Peter chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 7. And by the way, if you happen to have an authorized version of the scriptures, go ahead and get it. Don't worry. It will bite you. If you read it, especially if you start in the book of Romans, yeah, it's really going to bite you. Yeah. Yeah. It's really going to bite you. It's going to chafe you. It's going to offend you, especially if you start out in Romans 1, make it to Romans 2, and then the first part of Romans chapter 3, and read Romans chapter 3 as well. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See, there's these Christians out there who don't like to go to those parts of Romans, especially chapters 1 and 2, because they just want you to believe and damn you to hell, like they're going to hell, okay? <laughs> but, yeah, go ahead and get it. If, if you got one, if you got a copy of the Scriptures, if you don't, this second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. This is Peter talking to saved people. <coughs> that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before of the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, no, and we saints, we are to know this first and foremost, and 
Hello! <laughs> YouTube! And all these... Hello! Some of these atheist people. Okay? Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers. Like, you know? Scoffers. Walking after their own lusts. Scoffers. I don't really have a problem with this guy. I give him respect because at least he was up front about it. Dade Murphy. Okay. A Hamite individual um, who is going to hell. And he doesn't care. <laughs> he doesn't care. And apparently, Mr. Dade Murphy, as I have been informed, has been going on quite a tear about my father. Still not using this, but uh, of course. <laughs> but uh, never mind. He is a scoffer. But I give that guy credit because at least he's like, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, if, I wouldn't follow Jesus anyway, you know? Like that Aaron Ra guy. guy, that guy crazy, you know, Gene Hoglin look-alike. You, if you don't know who that guy, those of you for who this video is going to be addressing, you will know who Gene Hoglin is. Hoagland is. Uh, Aaron Ra, Gene Hoagland, you put them side by side, it's like, oh wow, they could be brothers. That Aaron Ra guy, he says straight up, the God of the Bible I would never follow. So, okay, that guy's going to hell, he's crazy, but you know where he stands. He's not like some of these guys, coadjutors, these guys who infiltrate, where you gotta peel back onion layers to get it. It's like, what the, you know? At least someone like that, okay, at least guys like Aaron Ra, guys like Dade Murphy, and I'm assuming, I have not contacted this guy because this guy we're going to be looking at, he's a, he's, a, he's a superstar, he's a big shot boy. And um, apparently, we sh share similar kindred. He's a Spaniard, an actual Spaniard. I'm majority Spaniard, not Hispanic. Spaniard. There, there's a difference. We won't get into that, okay? But knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers. Make light. Joke. Mock at sin. Okay? We are surrounded by scoffers. Some of you will see this, or for who at least this is intended for, you are probably a scoffer. <laughs> Bless your heart. <laughs> okay? You probably are. Okay? And it's increasing worse and worse and worse. And with this nonsensical woke thing, especially here in America, <laughs> evil is good and good is evil. Okay? So, we're seeing this fulfilled today. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? You know these people. You might be one of them. It's like it's always been the same. Huh? Where's your Where's the promise of your God, huh? As it's been from the rising of the sun, it's always been like this. It's gotten worse over time. See, evolution has some of you fools, a fool says in his heart there is no God. Evolutionary thought has some of you fools believing that things get better with time. <laughs> Explain to me your sagging skin suit. You know this, the flesh? Explain to me that. Oh, yeah, you can go and do a Joan Rivers and get collagen up to your eyeballs. Sure, go ahead. But, yeah, uh, it's called the second law of thermodynamics, which basically says, in time, everything goes down the toilet. Everything. Okay? Except he who lives outside of time. That is our God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. When I say our, I'm referring on to us who are saints. He, hey, look, you scoffer who may see this, guess what? He's your God too. I know you're going to pull a brave heart and it's like, never in my whole life did I swear allegiance to him. But see, it matters not. He is your king. That means you're going to have to give an account to him. And you will. Your belief on that, Mr. Atheist, Mr. Scoffer, or whatever, the, whatever you are, that that your belief on that is irrelevant and unfortunately the majority of you are going to find that out the hard way and by the time you find that out the hard way it's too late 
And when you are standing before the one that you've scoffed at, that you've insulted, that you have spit upon, you're going to be reminded of the times you've heard truth and you denied it. So you scoffers, go away if you don't want to get your butt chafed. But, okay, they say, well, where's the promise of his coming? It's always been like this. It's getting worse. The way it is today is nothing like it was 20 years ago. It's gotten worse. Man is declining, declining, declining. Hmm? So, well, where, where's your God? Where's your God? Where he always is. Everywhere. See, the problem is most of you don't want to see that. You know why? It's all about entertainment, man. Are you not entertained, huh? <laughs> you know freedom? You know what I have discovered? The um, grotesque counterfeit of freedom is? It isn't slavery as per se as you think. Entertainment is the grotesque counterfeit of freedom. Think about that. Think about that. When you're watching your television, what are you doing? Hmm? You're sitting there engaged in something that's being flashed before your eyes in a moment of time. Hmm? And you have the freedom to do that. Yes, all things are lawful unto you. Yes, but not all things are expedient. But see, you're captivated by it, aren't you? You say you can turn it off at any time, but you, you don't want to turn it off, right? Hmm. Well, we'll talk about this in other videos. But um, I believe that the most grotesque counterfeit replacement of freedom is entertainment. You're not entertained, huh? Oh, we're going to look at somebody really entertaining. Verse 4. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. We hear that today. And that comes from who? People who are scoffers. For this, they willingly are ignorant of. Ignorance is not knowing better. Okay, there ain't nothing wrong with ignorance. You can fix ignorance. When somebody is choosing to not know better, that's stupid. That's stupid. Okay? Then I, I ain't going to put it nice to you. Nice. Yeah, nice. Yeah. That's stupid. That's stupid. For this they are willingly ignorant of, that by the word of God, when it says word of God here, it's a reference onto the scriptures. That by the word of God, the earth, by th that by the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. The heavens that were of old. What that verse is telling us is that it's affirming the scriptures as historical evidence of creation and of the Lord himself. Because it's affirming where it says... The, by the word of God, the scriptures, the heavens were of old. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, okay? And the earth standing out of the water and in the water, talking about the creation, okay? Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished, okay? And we've covered this, and uh, these, there are people out there, it's like, well, how many earths have there been? It's like, dude, you're crazy. This is still the first Thursday. Okay, so never mind. You lost people don't know what I'm talking about. Most of you don't. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by this same word, scriptures, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of God, of judgment and perdition of un godly men of ungodly men and see 
When you replace freedom with entertainment, having the illusion, the delusion, that you are exercising your freedom, being a slave to a screen. You know another way that happens? You get yourself one of these things. You know, a tablet or your health phone, right? Next thing you know, you're, you're looking at these short videos or something like that. Some of you get these apps on your phone, and you're sitting there scrolling, scrolling, and you look at the clock, and it's uh, 1 in the afternoon, and scrolling, scrolling, you look up, it's 6. It's like, dude, is that freedom? That's entertainment, man. Are you not entertained, huh? Slippery slope. Slippery slope. <laughs> it really is. But fire. Fire. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, the scriptures, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. People who have rejected the truth. Okay? There is no option C. It's either A or B. You're either saved or lost. You're either going to go to heaven or to hell. There ain't no option C, despite what them wicked Catholics want you to believe. Okay? You're either going to heaven or hell. Your belief on that doesn't matter either. And unfortunately, most of you will find that out the hard way. But see what happens. Like I said, you replace freedom with entertainment, and then... A whole different dynamic comes in because you're glorifying yourself. You're gratifying yourself. You're glorifying yourself. You're glorifying flesh. And see, what happens when you put that kind of spotlight on yourself on some of these celebrities like we're going to look at. John chapter 5. John chapter 5. Verse, oh, 43 and 44. I am come in my Father's name. Jehovah saves Jesus. That's what the name Jesus means. Jehovah saves. Hey, Jehovah's Witnesses, in the scriptures or even in the Texas Receptus Greek, which one, by the way, um, the word Jehovah does not appear. Except in your the, um, interlinear from the Jehovah's Witnesses. But see, even that in the Greek text itself doesn't appear the word Jehovah. Just had to throw that out there. Mr. Murphy, how you? no saint would take you seriously in the fact that you, you're trying to attack God using the Jehovah's Witnesses Bible. Okay? <laughs> okay. Not even the Christians that you... Rightly make fun of Mr. Dade Murphy. I give you that. Make fun of the Christians. Go right ahead. Because that day, that Christianity is not the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Okay? Even they would not take you serious because you're reading something that even Christians look at as abominable. And that's your New World Translation. Okay? I've seen you in a video. I was sent it of you reading from the Jehovah's Witnesses Bible. Okay? So, dude, come on. Get... Grow up a little, okay? But, <clears throat> uh, where, 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 where were we reading for? Okay. I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, his own name, okay? Him ye will receive. How can ye believe? Ye is plural, okay? Ye means more than one. Okay, you, you, you lost people in atheists, it's like, oh, I can't even understand the scriptures. It's like, and you, you're, you're right to an extent, okay, the, the deeper things of scripture, no, you can't. But see, you know, as a lost person, you can definitely understand Romans 1, 2, and 3. Oh, you sure can. But you don't want to. That's your problem. How can you believe? How can ye plural, more than one, believe, which receive honor one of another, and seek not the honor that cometh from God only. Hmm. 
And in Luke chapter 16, verse 15, Luke chapter 16, verse 15, let's read 14 and 15. And the Pharisees also who were covetous in Psalm 10, Psalm 10, it says, read, go ahead and read this for on your own time, that God abhorreth the covetous. Abhor is extreme hatred. You got hate. You got despise. Okay, here's hate, despise. Abhor, loathe, okay? If you abhor something, you more than hate it. God abhorreth the covetous. Okay? And covetousness. Okay? And the Pharisees. Pharisee is someone who takes man's tradition. And here's scripture. Here's their tradition. And here's scripture. Actually, it's more like, here's tradition. And here is scripture. Okay? <clears throat> and the Pharisees also, who were covetous, heard all these things, and they derided him. And a modern Pharisee is a Catholic. Period. Verse 15. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, just as if I, I got to write that down and remember that, okay, just as if I, okay, <laughs> ye are they which justify yourselves before men, because you're all about flesh, and so is Satan, okay, but God knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. Highly esteemed. The favor of men. The applause living in the limelight. The universal dream. Oh, but I don't cleave to you. Hmm? Yeah. The heart of man is deceitful and desperately wicked. The scriptures tell us that he who trusts in his heart is a fool. And a fool says in his heart, there is no God. And what are you told to? Trust in your heart. You're a fool. You're a fool. <laughs> There's just no polite way to put that. You're a fool. Okay? That's what a fool is. John 12, verses 20, 42 and 43. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed on him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogues. Verse 43, specifically. For they loved the praises of men more than the praises of God. And that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. The praises of men. That is why, I praise the Lord, that at least when before I started doing this, I turned off my stuff and whatnot uh, so I don't get interrupted. Um, the Lord has allowed 530 at the making of this video people who are subscribed. Other people watch the videos. And thank you to the brethren, whoever, and my blessed enemies. <coughs> um, I'm... I'm content with that. I personally don't want anything to get big, big, big. I don't want that at all. Okay? But, you know, you can run into a temptation when you've got a channel that's got uh, uh, 50,000 subscribers or 100,000 subscribers. What about some of these guys that got millions of subscribers? Oh, for they love the praises of men more than the praises of God. Mm -hmm. And that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. We just heard it. Okay? Today, I want to talk to you about, and we've addressed this before, there will be links in the description box. Um, I can't pronounce the guy's name right, so I'm going to just, this guy. El Serbiano... El Esteperio Cerbriano. Um, this guy is a drummer. Okay, now we're, 
Here, we're going to, and uh, note the skull there. That's very, very significant. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm not going to, we're not going to see that until the time when we're actually going to go. We're just going to look at the channel. We're not going to listen to anything. Okay. Backstory. Very quickly. Bear with me. I am almost 50 years of age. I used to be a drummer. I used to be a good drummer. Nothing like the devil-possessed uh, individual that we are going to look at. Okay? He's a scoffer. In many of his shorts that he has done, he has even said, I sold my soul to play this. Um, that's a true statement. The guy says it's all practice and practice. No. 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 No, there's something else going on there. Okay? I used to be a drummer. I used to be a drummer. I used to be a very good drummer in my own right. Okay? I liked the heavy drumming. Okay? You know, with the triplet, you know, playing double bass and blast beats and just heavy, quick, aggressive, uh, Gene Hoagland-esque kind of stuff. Okay? Stuff like that. Okay? I used to be that. Uh, I could play that. And unfortunately, this very year, I had an opportunity. And it has been years since I had played drums, okay? I had an opportunity to sit in on a drum set on the Woodstock Square. Uh, a, a little set that had two drummers will understand this. It had two toms, floor tom, um, a bass drum, a snare, and a double bass pedal, a hi-hat, ride, and two crashes, okay? Very simple, very simple, very simple. Okay? And it had been years, years since I had played a drum set. Okay, I got on that thing and I had not skipped a beat. I was doing, you know, uh, kind of, you know, uh, what was that fuel injected suicide machine kind of beat. Don't ask, Saints, just leave it alone. Okay, uh, you know, um, uh, Raymond Herrera kind of stuff, Gene Hoagland kind of stuff, uh, Pete Sandoval. Uh, drummers, they, they know, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, Joey Jordanson, all right, you guys know, okay, you, you, you know. All right, you guys know about that, okay. But um, I could play like that. No, not on the level like of the Joey Jordison guy who's in hell. Uh, nothing like Neil Peart, who's in hell, okay? Nothing like Gene Hoagland or nothing like that. But in my own right, I could do that, okay? And recently, during the summer months, I got behind that drum set. And, you know, I, um, I forget the, the grip where they call it, the drummer guys, where you hold your wrist like this so you can use your wrist really good instead of, I think it's French or American grip or something like that. Okay, and I, drummers, you know what I'm talking about. And I, and I sit elevated that way that, you know, I use my calves more instead of my legs. Drummers understand this, okay? I got behind that drum set and I think I played drums for about five or eight minutes. I have a heart condition. Okay, just so you know. And I don't have, uh, I can't go to a doctor. So, <laughs> okay. I played that drum set. I did, I did not do a blast beat. But I'm, I'm going crazy on the double bass, doing all kinds of stuff like that. And um, after I was done, I thought I was going to die. But a woman came, you know, came up from the downstairs. It's like, you still got it. How would she have known that? Doesn't cleave to you. Doesn't cleave to you. Hmm? Hmm. Anyway, I bring that up so I can, so those of you who will see this know that I, it's not like I'm someone who's not familiar with the, and I'm using the right term, craft, which is known as playing the drums. Okay? All right? But you got a glimpse of it. This man, uh, Esther Piano, I'm, I, I'm, I don't want to mispronounce his name, but he says his secret is practice, practice, practice. 
And a lot of practice, yes. But see, Satan does stuff for people. Satan does stuff for people. He sure does. And any of you out there who are familiar with the band Morbid Angel, um, God of Emptiness, okay? That's stuff I used to listen to as a lost man. And the Lord saved me going on now, going to be uh, next year, 16 years ago. Okay? Okay? In Luke chapter 4, verses 4 on to verse 13, Satan is tempting Jesus Christ. Verses 3 on to verse 13. Let's read. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command the stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written. Saints, when it comes to spiritual warfare, this is how you fight spiritual battles with Scripture. Okay? Don't fall for what these charismatic... Yeah, yeah. Like with the sons of... And I was corrected on this, and I can't remember it, so correct me later. The sons of Skeva, or Skeva, um, when they tried to cast out the unclean spirit in the guy, um, calling upon Jesus whom Paul preached, they weren't saved. And, that guy, and the unclean spirit said to them, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you? Okay? All right. Spiritual warfare is waged with, it is written. It is written. And there are times when we as saints, it's like, Lord rebuke you. The Lord. Not I rebuke you in the name of, no, 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 no. The Lord rebuke you. Okay? The Lord rebuke you. But it begins. It is written. The man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word of God, you don't have the scriptures, uh, but by every word of God might not be in there. And here is for the individual that we're going to be looking at. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain on the top of your mountain, big shots, millions of subscribers getting all kinds of do re me. Yeah, 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 get on the top of the mountain. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain, shoot on to him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. How does Satan do that nowadays, dear friend? This, okay, this, this is a tablet, okay? My hell phone's over there, I got it off right now. Like this. You know how he does that? Oh, like with the guy we're going to be looking at. He has a ton of short videos. Okay? And they're engaging because they're fleshly. And, you know, there are certain drum rhythms, especially with your feet, that can go quicker than the heart. And there is a way, well, using, um, uh, well, I forget the actual term, but a way, a method of percussion where you can get in kind of a synced rhythm with an individual's heart. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, and the guy we're looking at, he knows that. Because the guy's full of devils. But this is how he, this is how he does it. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain, high on your mountain. You can sit here on your tablet or on your cell phone and scroll with your fingers. You can see Mount Everest from right here. Hmm? Hmm? You can see sunny palm trees and beaches right here, right here. That quick. And if you're going to be, if you're one of these guys, well, I don't know what you're talking about. And you call me the unintelligent one because I believe that in six, ga uh, six days God created the heaven and the earth. <laughs> okay, yeah. But he does that through the this guise of media. Of entertainment, man! Just like that. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee? Oh, yeah. For most people, it's in the power of your hand, is it not?
Yes, Lord, teach others, don't you teach yourself, right? Right? <laughs> and the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and all the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. Now, most people, like I said, it's in the power of your hands. You can see movies. You can see filth. You can you can go on, what, what, what's the term? Um, uh, virtual tours of countries. and you, From right here, in your skivvies, on a tablet or on a cell phone. Hmm? By the way, if you believe in coincidence, you have some issues. Okay? But Satan here in verse 6, for that is delivered unto me. Satan is the little G God of this world. He is the prince of the power of the air. Okay? You lost people, you atheists and all the rest of you who are not saved, you are as your father the devil. You are your own God. And because you think you are your own God and you determine what is right and what is wrong, contrary to what God, the only being that can rightly correctly, truly tell you what is right and wrong, you reject and you worship yourself. Hence, you are your father the devil. You get it? That's how that works. Okay? Well, I'm an atheist. There ain't no such thing as an atheist. You believe in a God. Yourself. Shut up. There ain't no such thing. Okay? But it's delivered unto him. He is the prince of the power of the air. Woman bleeding ate my gifts. Man was close behind, huh? Huh? Forget. I know I'm going to be attacked for this one. I know because of the stuff I mentioned. I'm sorry, but hmm? and the individual we are seeing here, going to be seeing here, just looking at very quickly. Um, his God, his Father, has given him a lot of things and is growing him continually. Mm -hmm. well, how do you know about this stuff, Brad? Satan knows how to attack. And in order for Satan and his devils to attack we, the saints, he needs God's permission. You can read about that in the book of Job, chapters 1 and 2. Okay? All right? So... The devil knows, the devils know how to get to me because I don't put them in the search. I stay away from it. But I'll be looking something online here on YouTube and in the side there, I see that fear factory. Hmm. I see, I, I'm not even going to mention the names, okay? But I see that. I see the drummers. I see that, that, that Jewish guy in Canada, Seamus66. Okay? I've seen him. Okay? That guy you might be able to talk to. Okay? I might be able to talk to that guy. I, I, I doubt it. But, I mean, uh, you know, he's Jewish, I think. I, I think he's Jewish. But, um, yeah, the, the devil sends these things, you know. And, you know, you shall put no wicked thing before your eyes. Why? Because it cleaves unto you. The things you look at. They're in here. The things you hear. Okay? I'm almost 50 years of age. Okay? I can still remember perfectly the beats for ACDC. For who the bell toes. The Metallica nonsense. Megadeth. And all that nonsense. It's still there. Okay? That's why, you know, when that happens, you get to hymns. Okay, yeah, you can't do it as good as they're supposed to be. It's a lot better than being tempted with Satan's music. Okay? All right? That's how. That's how. Okay, and yes, see, it's all fleshly. Especially like so like the Fear Factory with the um, uh, machine-like drum beats and stuff like that. Okay? It's very flesh gratifying. Just like the individual we are going to be seeing, okay? But see, the individual we are going to be looking at, we're just going to take a look, okay? Um, <laughs> somewhere in this man's life, and the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them. 
For that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. Hey, Estel, whatever your name is. I'll greatly enhance your drumming abilities, and I'll, and I'll have people and even big-time drummers who have made it come to you and honor you. And he puts off a, a veneer, a facade that he's humble. Of course, of course, all right? But see, what's the catch? Verse 7. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. Now see, right away, stop. You're thinking, worship. I'm not getting on my knees and going kumbaya to all oh, say. When you are considering yourself your own God, Okay, listen to me now. When you are the one like Mr. Dade Murphy, okay, he, right there, he's worshiping Satan. That, that guy calls himself a satanic atheist. Woo! <laughs> okay, that's almost as good as Christian atheist. Okay, woo! <laughs> okay, but see, here's the thing. You, you and uh, worship, uh, there would be a video on worship in the description box if you're interested, okay? All right. When you, as a lost person, an atheist, say, I will be like the Most High. I will be as gods. We will be as gods, knowing good and evil. When you are the one that decides right and wrong, rather than God, you are as your father, the devil. That means, guess what, son? You're worshiping the devil. Okay? Because, yes, you know, there are some guys, you know, I'm sure they're not sitting, you know, on their knees going, kumbaya, oh, hail Satan, hail Satan. No, they don't have to. You don't have to do that to be a worshiper of Satan. Okay? You don't. All right? You are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there was no truth in him. And when he speaks a lie, he speaketh of himself. Why? Because ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. See, when you hold to that, and fashion your life around that, guess what, cousin? You're worshiping the devil. There's no gray area, okay? A child, before they reach the age of accountability, that they can gravitate, that they have sinned against God, that's a different story, okay? No rabbit trails on that one. You're not allowed. You're not allowed, okay? When you are saying that you are your own God, that you are the one that determines right and wrong, you are worshiping the devil. It's that simple, okay? It's that simple. So somewhere in this man's life, he made, now this is the closest of that you get in scripture to someone actually making a deal with the devil. There's the story of the crossroads. Uh, they even made a movie out of it, which was basically based on a true story. The man that we are going to be looking at, he did this. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. Some of you is like, well, where's all my stuff? Um, Satan's a liar and the father of it. Okay? But see, a guy like who we're going to be looking at, I keep saying that because I, I don't want to mispronounce his name. Okay? But the guy we're going to be looking at, El Stepiariano Step or whatever his name is, um, somewhere in his life, he, he did this. And he is worshiping the devil, and the devil likes him, and making him rich, and put him on a mountain, and has great... Because you look at some of this guy's videos, dude, I don't care what your practicing is like. There's no way. There's no way. Okay, he's also a pretty buff guy, covered in tattoos, of course. Skulls. There's going to be a video where I've addressed this guy uh, before, but not so direct as this, okay? Um, yeah, he's got the physical thing, but there's 
there's that little something there to where, okay, this isn't natural. There's something else at work there. Let's finish this. Verse 8. Verse 8. And Jesus answered and said unto, them, unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And see, when you are worshiping yourself as your own God, every single one of you lost people and atheists do that. You are your own God. You decide what is good and what is evil. You are acting as your own God. You are worshiping the devil. Because he says it right there. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. Okay? Same rocket science. And he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. For it is written, Gotta remember that. Satan knows the scriptures better than Peter Ruckman did. Satan knows the scriptures better than John MacArthur does. And even, uh, what's his name? Um, Jesuit, uh, Jesuit James White. Yeah. All those three guys weren't saved, in my opinion. Of course, uh, uh, MacArthur, he's lost. Uh, Jesuit James White. <laughs> I don't believe that we're going to see Peter Ruckman in heaven. If we do, come on, give me the humble pie. Give me the crow. Can I have seconds and thirds? Give it to me, okay? If I'm wrong, hey, I'll take it, okay? That's me. I don't trust the guy. Never did, okay? But, all right, Satan knows scripture. Okay, you got to remember that. Why do you think a lot of these Christians sound so convincing? And why do you think there are so many counterfeits, counterfeits to the actual article out there? Think about that, okay? For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee. And he's quoting from Psalm 91. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. And Jesus answered, Answering said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. Okay? Now let's let's get take a look at this individual, okay? Alright, be careful with that. I don't want to have to. Alright. Else uh, let me see. Interact, okay. El Estepario Siberano, whatever his name is. All right. He has 3 million subscribers, uh, almost as many videos as the Lord has given me. The skull thing there is very significant. There will be a link in the description box where we talk about this stuff, and I even make mention of this individual, okay? Um, and his videos, come on, and here, yes. Slipknot just fired their drummer, Eminem, six million, built a monster, he's a percussionist, um, he's very popular, whatnot. Um, and here is where this guy is really making his impact with these short videos. Now this guy, now you just look at what he has. He has a bass drum, a snare drum, and a floor tom, and a bunch of cymbals and whatnot. And he has a double bass pedal. That's all he uses, okay? This guy can play one-handed and whatnot. Um, he's, 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 a, he's an amazing drummer. But see, when you watch him as someone who is aware of what's going on in playing the drums and reaction videos to this guy, a lot of people are like, dude, Wait a minute. You know, like there's this one guy who wears my haircut. It's like I've been playing for like 30 years. I've never seen anybody do this. And he says, so practice, practice, practice. A lot of practices in there, but there is some, there's a little extra added ingredient. 
And we're not going to find it because I don't want to go through the entire thing of his, um, of his uh, stuff that he has here. But there are videos, these shorts where he said, where he said, I literally sold my soul to play this. Uh, the Meshuggah song, Bleed, with that incredible, you know, bass drum beat that's in there. I mean, that's, you know, he does that with one foot, with one foot, and using the floor tom. Drummers, you know what I'm talking about. You know, he uses that instead. There, there is more than something natural to this man's ability. Okay? And y'all can come up with whatever you want, whatever you want. There is something more to this man's ability than just his practice. I ain't saying he, he uses marijuana, whatever, he's out of the state, smokes cigarettes, okay? I'm not saying he does like any steroids or any kind of performance enhancing drugs. I would not be surprised that the one video I saw, he did a, a cover of the Dragon Force, he, never mind Saints. Uh, thing where he was playing with one hand and he had a timer because they accused him of t uh, tape speed editing. And then he said, if you people would spend more time practicing than hating, the world would be a better place. Practice. Look, mister, and he ain't he a big shot. He's up on the mountain. Okay. Look, mister L. Estaperio. You made a deal with the devil. You did. You even mock and scoff at it in some of your shorts here. Okay? And when you get to a position of this, not many mighty, not many noble, okay? What does that mean? Uh, for this man to actually maybe come to Christ and the Lord save him, it's not impossible. But, um, yeah. Yeah, this... Yeah, but uh, like I said, I mean, uh, and I, I, I'm not going to put the, I might put the link in there because his name is, unless you spell it right, okay, but you know, th this is what he does, this is what he is, okay, and um, it, does he, uh, other channel, no, because he's, he's, you know, whatever he does is, okay, wh wh whatever, you, you get the point, you get the point, okay. There is more to that man's ability, to his drumming, than just, as he claims, practice, practice, practice. I'm not saying that he's using performance-enhancing drugs. I would not be surprised, but I'm not saying that. What I am saying is, that man is devil-possessed. That man is getting a little extra, and it's not from practice. Okay, I, I, and of course, I'm, I was never, never could be, never wanted to be as good a drummer as he is. Okay, um, if you wanted to go that route, uh, if you wanted to be that vain, because most lost people are, um, I, I could not even keep up with him for five, not even a minute. Okay, you happy? Of course not. Of course not. Okay, I, I'm, I'm almost 50 years old. Okay, and I don't want that either. Okay, just so you know, okay, I mean, the kids that come up, I mean, they're, they're these uh, shemetic uh, Japanese ladies, excuse me, women, who are just flying on them double, it's like, wow, wow, man, how do you know this, Brad, I told you, I told you, the devils know how to get at me. And you look at one short video, and four hours later, you've seen a thousand. Goes by muy rápido. It's very easy to do, and it's meant to be that way. Mark chapter 9, verse 34 and verse 38. <clears throat> and here's the thing for, uh, what's his name again? El Esteperiano, or whatever your name is. He's not going to see this. But um, here's something that you people, especially when you get to this kind of level, you have to consider. Mark 8, excuse me. Mark 8, 34 and a verse 38. 
And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Ah, uh, you think, what's his name there is denying himself? Oh, he's so humble in a video. <laughs> For whosoever will save his life will lose it. How do you save your life? All this will I give you. Fall down and worship me. I hope you not. Hmm. For God doth know in the day that ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Okay? For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. Going contrary to the world, the flesh, and the devil by getting saved by our Lord Jesus Christ and adhering your life to the scriptures. Uh, a brother and I were talking uh, just the other day uh, and the thing about tattoos, okay? Uh, you know, if you get saved and you have tattoos, that you were ignorant, you didn't know better, okay? You're saved and you get tattoos, you no, you can't lose your salvation. You can't lose your salvation today. Uh, no, but there's a lot of other things you can lose, okay? So you got to be aware of that, okay? But uh, nowadays, um, I and I was the one who quoted it, Ozzy Osbourne himself even said, if you want to be original nowadays, don't get a tattoo. It seems like everybody's got a tattoo. That ain't going to send you to hell. No, it isn't. No, but it's just another affront to God. Okay? All right? But see... You save your life by going along with the flow. Just roll with it. Be creative. Use your imagination, man. Bow down to him. He has the power to give you everything. And what's contrary to that, what's contrary to the flesh, the spirit and the flesh, they're contrary. Going against the grain. Going to the cross, broken of your self-righteousness. Being a man or a woman and taking responsibility because guess what, cousin? You put him on the cross. So did I. There'll be videos for you to consider if you want more. Okay? And you got to have the, the health scared out of you. Fear the Lord. And in a state like that, when you are brought to the end, when you are broken to smithereens and you're on your knees on a cold concrete floor, snotting all over yourself, terrified, shaken, broken, it's my fault. The only thing you want to do is call upon the name of the Lord. And a lot of there are a, a certain division of Christianity that are all against that. All against that. They ain't saved themselves. I, I like to attack them, attack them and pick on them quite a bit. They they grieve me. They grieve me. Okay? They, they are grievous. But, Mr. Separanio or whatever his name is, okay? He saved his life. His best life is now. You know that El Serapanio? I'm sorry I mispronounced it. You're not going to see this, Okay? And like I say to all the devils who attack me and the brethren, I hope you're having your best life. And this that guy, he's, he's, he's sitting on the high hog, you know, just like some of these other YouTube preachers out there, sitting high on the hog, and then make light of it. When you got a brother who gives you five bucks, it's like, oh, that's just me. <laughs> there have been times when someone has graciously giving us just ten dollars and that ten dollars was just enough as we needed to pay the electric bill talk about it. Oh, gratitude okay and here's the question and here's what satan it's like freedom and entertainment for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul. Or what shall man what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? How about a, a good movie tonight? How about a video game? How about a 
fancy. You know how much drum sets, especially nowadays, I'm sure cost? Oh, sure, you can get 500 bucks and get yourself a cheap little piece of whatever. But, like, drum sets, like what that guy, like that Seamus, Jewish Seamus guy I mentioned, okay? Uh, that, <laughs> those guys, those guys, those guys got drum sets that cost upwards the price of a small house. Okay? I bet you that guy, he, I bet you he's sitting literally with his drums, and they got more than just that. They got parts because drummers, you know, what do you do? You got parts. You break things. You know, the, the pedal breaks, the chain breaks, sticks, you know, go like nothing. You, you break, you, you crack a cymbal, you bust heads, literally. Okay, so drummers have parts. Okay, that guy's, I bet you, sitting easy, easy, easy on 25 grand worth of equipment. Easy. That Seamus guy in Canada, I bet you the equity that he has and what he does, I can bet you he's at least a hundred grand as far as equipment and electronics and his drum set. Don't, don't look this guy up. He's profane, okay? He's profane. They're all profane, okay? But, I mean, this, this is not a cheap thing. It costs a lot of money, huh? Okay? So, they gain the whole world, but they lose their soul. We're not going to get into that. That's a whole totally different thing, but what we're just dealing with what we're dealing with, what we're looking at, for instruction in righteousness and to warn you people. Satan, instead of, instead of being, uh, having the sun make you free, Satan enslaves you by entertainment, man. You're slaves. And hey, I'm rebuking myself too. Okay? All right? Because it's so easy to do. You're slaves to entertainment. I am convinced the ultimate satanic counterfeit to freedom is entertainment. Are you not entertained? Huh? An enemy has, has done this. That, check that video out in the description box. Okay? Verse 38. Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words and this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. That's talking about the second coming. And verse 38, he was specifically addressing that specific generation at that time. That's a dispensational thing. Devils and know what I'm talking about. You lost people. You was like, what is that? You need to know that you're going to hell. You're going to hell unless the Lord saves you. You're going to go to hell and you're going to burn forever. Forever. Okay? Your soul doesn't go up like a puff and that's it. No. You're going to burn forever. Okay? You need to be aware of that. You need to get saved. Time is running out. And see, what does Satan do? Huh? Makes you profit. What, what, verse 36. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? Proverbs 7. Here's what Satan does. Now, this is talking about a woman, a harlot. And you study this out in the scriptures. I, per, I believe that this is the description of Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, Roman, uh, Romans, Revelation chapter 17, which, excuse me, which is talking about Roman Catholicism. Okay? How the, and Rome, Roman Catholicism is Satan's church. And it calls itself Mother Church, and her army is the Jesuit order. Okay? Check out the things about the Catholics. We've got a, bit, a lot for you here, okay? Proverbs 7. Here's the tactics. She'll put in the world in front of your face in a moment of time. And doesn't sin look so beautiful? Huh? You, you listen to that vain, vulgar uh, uh, Dave Murphy? 
Oh, wow. You talk about someone who like a dog putting his nose in it and coming up with a big old smile. Proverbs 7, verses 13 on verse 23. This is how it happens. So she, Satan, Mystery Babylon, the great. Context is different. Instruction and righteousness, also different. Okay? So she caught him and kissed him. And with an impudent mm -hmm, face, she said unto him, It's all about you. Come here. Come here. Look at, look at what I offer you. Fall down and worship me. Huh? Give in. A little doesn't hurt. Hmm? I have peace offerings with me. This day have I paid my vows. Therefore came I forth to meet thee, diligently to seek thy face. And I have found thee, because it's all about you. I'm here because of you. I want to give you everything. Damn you to hell in the process. Gives you the entire world in a moment of time. You could be sitting there in your skivvies on your couch and go to Antarctica if you want via the internet on your tablet or on your hell phone. Okay? Therefore came I forth, verse uh, 15, Therefore came I forth to meet thee, diligently to seek thy face, and I have found thee. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved works, with fine linen of Egypt. For us, Egypt is synonymous for things of the world, for this dispensation and instruction and righteousness. You lost people don't know what I'm talking about. Egypt is a type of the world as far as the saints are concerned, okay? That's all you need to know for right now, okay? But I have decked my bed. The sexualization of everything. A little 11-year-old girls walking around and you think they're in their uh, 20s even? Hoard up, okay? The sexualization of children. The sexualization of everything. It's in the bed. Huh? I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved works, with fine linen of Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamons. Pleasant odors, okay? Aloes and cinnamons. Yes, aloe, even when you scrape it up, does have an interesting odor, especially when you eat it. Never mind. And what does she do? Come. All this will I give you if you worship, fall down and worship me. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning and have a one night stand. And see, that guys like that, that drummer guy that we looked at, the Joel Osteens, the guys who are having their best life now apart from God, okay? It's the equivalent of a one night stand because the eternal gratification you are going to get is when you're in hell. Wake up! But see, see, y'all like your sin. That's that's your problem. You like it. What's well, not to like, right? But at the end, you don't consider your latter end, dear friend. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with love. Remember what we looked at? Well, where's the promise of his coming like we looked at it in 2 Peter chapter 3? Huh? Where? Because everything that has been going on the same way it has always been. Where's your God? For the good man is not at home. He has gone on a long journey. He had taken a, he had taken a bag of money with him, signifying rewards, and will come home at the day appointed. We don't know when, so let's live it up. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we shall die. Yeah. Yeah. With her much fair speech. See, a lot of you are, are taught by Helly Weird, Helly Wood, and music that Satan, devils, stuff like that. That, yeah, but that's a distraction. That's the distraction. Okay? Like Anton LaVey and his nonsense. Yes, Satan has a part in that. But the ultimate form of Satanism is religious ceremony, i.e. Rome. 
Rome is Satan's religion. You know, I've met many people who have claimed to be Satanists, and it's like, then how come you're not Catholic? That, 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 that floors them most of the time. It's like, well, what do you mean? It's like, that's Satan's religion, okay? All right? But, see, you're being trained that a devil is aggressive, and he is, okay? But he uses that for distraction. Satan is smooth. Satan is suave. Satan is sweet. Satan is beautiful. Why do you think your sin looks so, so gorgeous, so beautiful? Okay? Devil speak, they call, I've called it. How does a devil speak or dragon speak? You think a dragon speaks, Argh! they speak, they speak smoothly, softly. And always with a certain tone of voice, never to arouse suspicion or confrontation. They always sound like this. They always sound so soft, so endearing, so so sensitive, so sweet. This is how a dragon, a devil speaks to you, my friend. That's the reality. The uh, ha, ha, that's a distraction. Yes, yes, that is satanic. But the ultimate of it is in the suave. Speak on to a smooth thing. It's prophesy the seats. It's their ears. Ye have God said. Like we're seeing right here. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. He go and yeah, ah. he goes after her straightway as an ox goeth to the slaughter or as a fool to the correction of the stocks, till a dart strike through his liver, as a bird hasteth to the snare, and knoweth not that it is for his life. And your eternal life is at stake. See, your body dies, but see, your soul and your spirit is what is eternal. You're going to either be in heaven with the Lord for eternity, or you're going to be in the lake of fire. Where is it going to be? It doesn't matter if you believe in that or not. That's the reality, Jack. Deal with it. Okay? Deal with it. Luke 14. Luke 14. Verses 28 on to verse 33. Luke 14. Verses 28 on to verse 13. Oh, 33. 28 on to verse 33. Excuse me. And here's why... You people don't want it. Because some of you will consider the cost. And you like your sin more than the Lord. Like I, I've named him now. Dave Murphy. He likes his sin. He likes his sinful whatever lifestyle that he has. He likes that. And if the Lord were to appear to him, it's like, Dave, come on. He wouldn't want it. Like most of you. And see, you're given a distraction from Christianity that you rightly scoff at. When you hear a Christian saying, God loves you, and you can find out for yourself, like, wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Because the God of Christianity is not the God of the Scriptures. Okay? It's not. And see, that's the point. It gets you distracted. Okay, so when you encounter a saint, an actually saved person, we, we might as well be speak, speaking to you in Swahili. But see, there are some of you out there, like Mr. Dade Murphy, like that El Saperiano guy, and a lot of these guys who have made it, okay? They have considered this. For which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and counteth the cost? whether he have sufficient to finish it. And like the Masons, they're building their palace for life or whatever, okay? Okay, your goal in life is to get to know the Lord, okay, and to serve him, okay? But see, when you make your life self-serving, you're building your tower, towers just like the Masons, okay? There's an actual proud Mason down the way over there, okay? So they look at the, the thing, it's like, okay, God, follow the Lord, and that means I'd have to uh, have to and want to align my life 
uh, with the scriptures, okay? Salvifically, if you come to the Lord, you don't have to uh, follow the scriptures. But see, if you don't, we've addressed that in tons of videos. If you don't, you're going to pay a heavy price, but you won't lose your salvation. But see, someone who is truly saved, you want to, okay? The guys like you, I constantly knock, they're not saved. And they go after this for you and they get you. Okay? All right? But there are those out there who's like, okay, if I follow Lord Jesus, then I'm going to have to, I can't, King Solomon tried to play both sides of the fence. He failed miserably. Okay? It's either or. You can't play both sides. You can't have your cake and eat it, eat it too. Lukewarmness makes the Lord want to puke. Okay? You're either hot, you're either cold. You're, it's either white or black. It's either A or B. There is no C. It's a, either male or female. It's simple. It's simple. And many of us are like, well, I don't want that. I want, I want the world instead of life. Lest haply after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king sitteth not down first and consulteth whether he be able with ten thousand to meet him that cometh against him with twenty thousand? Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassage and desireth conditions for peace. So likewise, Whosoever be, uh, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Paul considered all things but dung that he can win Christ. And see, that's what so many of you lost people don't want. You want your cake and eat it too. The, and this is what Christianity tries to give you, where you can have God. The, the sleazy believists are the most notorious. Okay, they with their stupid satanic just believe you can live like a devil and go to heaven just because you believe. Don't worry about it. And atheists that I have encountered have an at least, not all of them, not all of them, but some that I have encountered, it's like, that doesn't make sense. I know. I know. Okay? I know. Mr. Dave Murphy is one who I think he's the one who's be like, that doesn't make sense. But then again, he's made his choice. See, they made their choice. They have weighed. <laughs> like it says in like it says in Daniel. Uh, Daniel, what is that, brother? Um, Daniel chapter 5. Daniel chapter 5. Come on. Daniel chapter 5. Mene, mene, ah. The writing on the wall. Daniel 5, verses 25 on to verse 20, uh, 28. And this is the writing that was written. Mine, mine, tekel a person. This is the interpretation of the thing. Mine, God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Your kingdom. Your kingdom. Number. Number. You're all gonna die. Ooh, that's a good one for uh, that's a good one for a reference. Okay, You're all gonna die. Dikel, thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. Twenty-eight Perez, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. Some of you have weighed and measured. And you just don't want, foolishly, you just don't want the Lord. And see, what you're not considering is your latter end dear friend. For all my uh, spitting and yelling, I don't want to see you go to hell. Like I said, 
I, I, I don't give a rat's rear end whether or not you believe. You, your belief on that is irrelevant. That's where you're going if the Lord doesn't save you. In Mark chapter 9, verses 43 on to verse 48. Here's your destination. Here's what you have chosen. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better. Now, he's not talking literally. Okay? He's not talking literally. He's talking about abstaining from getting away. Okay? It's not what he's not talking about chopping off your hand, cutting out your eye, or cutting off your foot. He's talking about, hey, let's look. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched. Where the fire shall never be quenched. What, what's your hand touching? These laptops or the tablets all the time? Hmm? Well, it said the fire just won't be quenched. Nothing about us. Where their worm, I believe that's a reference onto the soul, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Soul annihilationism is a fantasy. When you go to hell, it's for eternity. There's no getting out of it. And for that golfing enthusiast idiot who's teaching a veiled form of Catholicism, you don't know because he deleted that channel. It's like uh, he's taught that uh, people go to hell to just to be converted to go to heaven. That's Catholic. He's Catholic. My dear friend, you know who you are. That guy, uh, he's a coadjutor. But you know that. You know that. You know that. Okay? Verse 45. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. Where, where are your feet taking you? Hmm? you going to those concerts? Hmm? you going to a strip club? you going to the booze place? Huh? Where are you going? Where are your feet taking you? What path are you on? And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched. Where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes to be cast into hell fire where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. It's better to be at a disadvantage as far as the world is concerned than having the advantages and going to hell. Okay? That's what, this, and you know, like I said, and you are going to know this when you stand before the Lord at the great white throne of judgment. Okay? You are going to know this. But unfortunately, it'll be too late for many of you. Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. Verses 24 on to verse 27. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Let us solace ourselves with loves. Let us have a one-night stand. Your life is a vapor! Esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures of Egypt, the treasures of the world, for he had respect unto the recompense with the sea of the reward. Uh, recompense with the sea is a noun. Recompense with an S is a verb. If I have that backwards, a dear brother will correct me. Okay? By faith he forsook Egypt, got out of the world. If thy hand offended, get rid of it, your eye, feet, you know, forsake it. Okay? Not fearing the wrath of the king, who is the king of this world. Hmm? Yeah, the, the earth is the Lord's. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay? Yes, it is. But it's been given 
excuse me, it's been given unto Satan for terms of judgment, okay? By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea and by dry land, as by dry land, which, which the Egyptians are saying to do were drowned. It's going to be it for this video. I hope I've offended you lost people. I really do. I really do. Because the, the hour is getting late, time is running out, and you are not saved, and some of you don't even want to be saved. You need to consider these things before it is too late. Watch out for this stuff. So, it's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching this. If you do, there'll be links for you in the description box. Thank you. God help you.